I'd have a lot of friends that would want to hang out with me for the benefits. Right? Some of them are going to be for wrong reasons. Some of them are just going to be because they want help. Some of them are some of them just going to want uh, something, you know, to take advantage of something. But, but they would hang out with me just because I had a billion dollars. We serve a God tonight that's got way more than a billion dollars. We should want to. We should love to hang out with Him. We should want Him in our life. We should want every aspect of Him. We should, we should follow Him in ways because He is that supernatural God. Do you, you see what I'm saying? When, when God says, Thou shalt love me or Thou shalt love the Lord thy God, you've got to look at it in the way that He is King of Kings. He is Lord of Lords. He is God above all gods. He's a supernatural, all-consuming, uh, wonderful God. And, 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 and you want to be with Him because of the benefits and because of, of what He does for us. And so in order to do that, uh, how, do we, how do we do that? If we, if we would go to John, uh, John chapter to my notes here. In, in John chapter uh, 14, uh, verse 15, it says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. So, so the way to love God is to, is to how? To keep his commandments. And, and, and uh, what has happened in the church world, or I feel this is what's happened in the church world, is we've stopped at, at places like worshiping God. I mean, I love worship. I mean, tonight was great. Did, did you not feel the presence of God here? Did you not love the presence of God? It, it's great to be in the presence of God, to worship God, to honor God, to glorify God. But that's not a place to stay. That's that's a place to that's something to experience. But 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 the love for God is, is when you go home tomorrow and you go to your job and you say, God, how do I bring your love? How do I bring your commandments into my life so that so that I do my job in, in, in such a way that glorifies you. That's loving God. And, that, and, and if you have that as your end picture, it changes how you do everything. If, I, I, think, I really honestly think sometimes we have, we have spoiled the younger generation with, with, with the ability to play Christian music 24-7. Because, because our, our, and even adults today, are so wrapped up in music and in worship and in, and in, 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 in worship music that they get their, they get everything that they need. They, they feed on just worship. John Cooper, actually, uh, the, the, the lead singer in, in uh, uh, who can help me out? Skillet. Skillet. Who listens to Skillet? I don't, 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 I do Okay, there you go. I've heard of Skillet, I don't, I don't really care for Skillet, but, but somebody, some people love Skillet. He actually said that we're, 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 we're allowing our 20 year old worship leaders to teach us everything we know about Christianity. And that's a problem. Because I've listened to some of our young, younger uh, music leaders and they don't know what they believe. They don't know what they believe about homosexuality. Right. They don't know what they believe about that. They're, 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 they're at a place in their life where they don't even want to make a statement because they're going to lose people that follow them. Okay, so, so there's got to be something more than just worship. There's got to be something, and, 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 and I want you to understand, it's not, I'm not against worship. I believe worship is absolutely important. But if, if, if that's where you feed, if that's all you feed on, it's not going to hold you. That's right. It's not going to keep you. You've got to develop a love for God. Amen. And a love and a love for God means that you love his commandments. Yeah. Or let me put it this way, you love his word. For years I've been emphasizing, pastors have been emphasizing that we need to read the Bible. <laughs> absolutely important. I believe it's absolutely important. And the other night when, when I was in the when, we were, when I was teaching the youth, I had what you call an epiphany. Big word, I thought it was I thought I'd throw it out there because it sounds cool. <laughs> I had a revelation. I had I had I had a I had a sudden uh, a sudden uh, inspiration. If if I read my Bible because I have to, probably not going to get much out of it. If I pray because I have to, I may not get much out of it. If 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 I if I if I bind myself to a schedule because I have to, I will probably receive some benefits. But the reality is, is my heart's not going to be in it. 
We have to get to a place where we read the Word of God because we want to learn how to live. Amen. And I believe this is the one key that, that most people are missing is they, they know as a Christian, they know as a believer that they need to get up in the morning or before they go to bed at night, they've got to open that Bible up and they've got to read something. They've got to read something in that Bible, then they can close that Bible, then they've got to get on their knees beside their bed and say a prayer. And then, and then uh, if, if they're really, really good Christians, they're going to, uh, you know, worship God or praise God or do something like that. Yet. If you do all of that, I'm sure there's benefit. But, but if you don't read your Bible because you want to learn how to live, because you want to learn to follow God's commandments, then you haven't, then you don't, then you're in pictures off. You see what I'm saying? You've got to follow God because you love God. You've got to serve God because you love God. And loving God involves keeping His commandments. Following His laws. I mean, just, I mean, if you read John chapter... I'm not, I'm not making this stuff up. John chapter 14. This is, this is actually Jesus speaking. So I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not making stuff up. It says it says very clearly, it says, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And if, if, if I love God, then I'm going to be reading the Word of God to find out what His commandments are. And, and I know that you can probably list the ten. You can definitely probably list the two major ones, right? But, how do you put them to practice in your life? So tomorrow morning when you go to work, and someone says something nasty to you, how do you bring the, law, the Word of God, the Law of God, the commandments of God into practice in your life? You see, that's where loving God and loving His commandments begins to change your life. What about tonight after service, someone doesn't shake your hand, you become offended because, because uh, you know, uh, uh, the click has uh, got together again and left you out. You know, putting it out there. I know we don't have one here, but putting it out there. How are you going to respond in, in, a, in, 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 a, in a way that, that shows you love God? You're going, to, you're going to phone up your friend and say, that click left me out again? Or are you going to, get into, are you going to dig into the Word of God and say, God, uh, how does your Word apply to this situation? What do I do in this situation? When, when, you, when you have a, an incident at work, when, you've got, when, when, when something takes place at work, when something takes place in your, in your personal life, possibly, possibly in your neighborhood, the way that you love God is by, by bringing God's word, by bringing the laws of God, by bringing the commandments of God into your life, into effect in your life. It, it's, not, it's not the people that know the commandments. It's not the people that know the laws of God that, 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 that means anything. It's the people that do them. Right? So, so we, 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 we are very good at that, and we justify ourselves. Well, I, 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 re I read the Bible every day. I pray every day. I worship God every day. But, but I, want, I want to challenge you to go further and say, how do I bring God's light? How do I bring God's love to work and, and in my life and, and to just show people that I love God? You see... The, one of the first commandments uh, that, that, God, that God speaks of is, if you don't love your fellow man, then, then you can't love God. And, and, and most of us have a lot of trouble with, with loving our fellow man. I mean, even I do. Just being honest with you. But, but, but when, I, when, I reach, when I realize it in myself that, that, there is something, that there is something going wrong, when, that there is something not, not, not right in, in my heart in, in the way that I think, then I've, got to, then I've got to fall into the Word of God and say, okay, your Word says this. And God, because I love you, I want to, I want to obey your Word. Amen. Do you know how many times I've, I've, I've had to swallow uh, angry retorts? Do you know how many times I've had to swallow angry replies? Do you know how many times that I've, I've had to change the way I responded? Because I, not because the person deserved it, they didn't. But because I love God. So, I want you, we need to, to take this up a level and, 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 and realize that loving God means loving His Word enough to, to allow it to change every aspect of our life. You see, if, if, we, would go through, uh, if we would go through the book of Exodus and, and, and especially in Deuteronomy, it's all about Israel being a nation that, that was to be a light to the other nations. 
and, and that mandate has not changed in the New Testament. God still wants his people, his chosen people, to be a light to the nations. And, and, and in order to do that, uh, one, one, of the, one, of the, one, of the, one of the greatest ways I can, I can look at it is, is when I realize that God in his, in his, in his uh, supernatural power plucked me out of sin, took me through the Red Sea, took me through baptism, brought me to the Mount Sinai, in, uh, gave me the infilling of the Holy Spirit for, for one reason, so I could begin to learn his laws, so I could begin to learn his commandments, so I could, could begin to do them. Because before I was saved, I didn't know any laws. Right? I, di I didn't know what was better, what was right, what was good. But, but, what, but God specifically brought me out of Egypt, brought me out of the world, brought me out of where I was to take me to Mount Sinai where he would bring down the commandments so that I could learn how to live. And he gave me a specific commandment saying, you are supposed to love me and you're supposed to love my commandments. Praise the Lord. Isn't, isn't this good stuff? Yes. Hallelujah. Uh, we, we get to a place, I, I, and, and, and I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this tonight because, because there are so many Christians, so many believers, so many, so many people who are falling by the wayside because they've, they've made a stopping place their destination. And, 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 and as important as I believe baptism is, as important as I believe the infilling of the Holy Spirit is, as important as I believe that all of that is that it's only a stopping place in God. And, 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 and when I say a stopping place, that doesn't mean that, that the minute you leave that place that you shed it, you take the experiences of that place with you, and it, it forms who you are, it forms your character. And it, it, it makes you into the person, and, and so God, when you realize that every, every place that you go in your life, every, every situation you face in your life, uh, there, there are circumstances that you face in your life, God is taking you there because he wants to teach you something to, to equip you to, to live in the land of Canaan. It, it changes. It changes everything about serving God and, and, and loving God. We would realize that that the reason I need to read the Word of God is because I need to learn how to live according to the Word of God. Yes. Right. It changes everything when I realize that 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 the Word of God has got a solution for every problem that I have in my life. Whether it's a relationship, whether it's a, uh, whether it's 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 a, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it, it's something to do with 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 it, it, the, the possibilities are endless. Every situation is covered by the Word of God. And, and it's up to us to dig into the Word of God, to love God's Word enough to find out how to live our lives because of it. And so uh, when we look at, when we look at, the, at the end picture, is, is, is we, we want to do everything that we do because we love God. So, so everything that, every, your, your desire, your, everything that you're, that you're looking for is because you love God and you want to, and you want to show that love by, by following his commandments. <clears throat> it's, it's uh, you know, we sometimes get a, become afraid that we're going to all of a sudden think that, uh, uh, that, that we're, that we're, that we're, that we think that we're getting saved by works. And, and, and we, and we all know that, that we can't, we're not saved by works. Salvation, salvation uh, shows us that it's a, it's, a, it's a supernatural power of God that saves us. But do but you know how many times in the New Testament, I didn't, I didn't count them up, but if you put uh, good deeds or good works into your Google engine of your, of your Bible, you, they, it, there's, there's like 15 to 20 different references that pop out that speak to the importance. The apostles, Jesus himself, talked about good works. Because God saved you, delivered you, set you free, gave you his word, so that you could begin to do right things. So that you can influence people to do right things. So don't be afraid of good works. Embrace good works. Is that, is that fair? Yeah. It's not about, you realize, I hope you realize tonight that you never got saved by doing the right things. You can't, you can't, you can't, I mean, if you, if you, if you, if you go to someone tonight and say, well, you need to straighten up this, you need to change this in your life, you need to, if you want to become a Christian, you've got to do this, this, and this, forget it. They're never going to become a Christian. But when they become a Christian, when they have that heart experience, when they've got that, that, that change in their life, that, that, that change in their heart, then you, then you hand them the word of God and say, this is what you do to, to live for God. The God that, the, 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 the one and only God the true God, the God of Israel, Isaac, and Jacob, 
This is, this is how you live your life to show that you love him because 